Hi, welcome back to Roland the Robsons. In this short series of videos, we're looking at different caravans which are aimed at families. So people that have got maybe four or five people or even six people that need to be in their caravan. So today we're back down here, United British Caravans, which is loaded in Newcastle. And today we're looking at the Sprite Quattro DD. And this van also has an additional diamond pack. So hopefully you're going to enjoy this video, we'll have a look around the outside, we'll have a look at the inside and I'll give my view on family perspective. So unfortunately the main star of the show isn't here today, Maisie's still at school because Easter holidays for her school breaks up a week later. But obviously I'm off because I'm a teacher and my school has broken up. So we'll have a look around the outside of the caravan and then we'll go inside and have a look and see what we think and what we like about this caravan. So here we have the front of the Sprite Quattro DD Diamond Pack, which is a double dinette caravan. Um, as you can see there, it's got the triple front windows and it's also then got the overhead skylight. Coming down to the airframe, it's obviously got a, a hitch stabiliser on as standard. Nothing else there is pretty standard. And it's also got the little steps there so you can stand on the front of the steps in order to clean the window. We also have a full front locker, which has become more of a rare thing in the world of caravan in these days. I'm just going to go around the outside. So we've got the nice, and I think the IOS synth sprites look quite attractive caravans. They are, again, intentionally meant to be entry level, but they have lots of uh, features on them, and I think they're quite good value. So we've got our front window, window above the kitchen. Again, the vents for the, um, the fridge are coming out of the side. Again, not everybody's favorite preference, but fine by us. This is a twin axle, and then we've got a front door. The weight for the caravan are as shown here. Mass and running order 1498 with an MLTP uh, fully loaded 1678. Back window into the second dinette. We also have a hatch here in order to access under um, the bunk or possibly seat that's inside. Coming round to the back. Uh, we've got a kind of a space if you want to install a bike rack on the back as well. And again, we've got a back, um, about like any other part of the bike rack. So let's go around the other side. So coming down the other side of the caravan, the far side, you've obviously got a vent there for the Truma blown heating. We've got the water inlet access hatch where the battery will be stored. And again, we've got the Sprite logo on the side there and then the window above that goes into the front living area. Again, twin axle, and it has some quite attractive looking alloy wheels down there. At the back here, pretty standard, we've got an access point for the toilet cassette, and we've also got the fill point for the toilet, and then we've got the back window as well. So let's give you a little quick view the other way, down the side of the caravan. Again, I do think that the Sprite uh, logos work well. It has some good decals on there. So sat in the front of the Sprite Quattro DD, this is a standard width caravan at seven foot six. It's not one of the new super versions with the eight foot, but the space is still very good in the front of here. Um, so we've got the table in here, so the occasional table that pulls out here when as when you need it. There is on the top here, there is like the swift kind of panel as I have it now. It's a bit of a love or hate feature. I think it's quite useful having things that are nice and easy to see. Although if you are becoming a bit like me, like more of a minimalist, the cables might annoy you a little bit. But again, I think it works really well for a lot of people. So at the front here, we've got a plug socket. We've got two USBs. On the other side, we've got a coax for the um, TV. And we've got uh, a 12 volt um, kind of inlet as well. Above here, it's kind of similar on both sides. I'll show you that in a second. We have two full-size lockers, and we also have a little uh, section at the front here, which also pulls out. Above me again, we'll show you in a second. There is a big skylight here to let lots of natural light in, as well as we have speakers above me, and we also have some little spotlights. In here, we have little drop-down spotlights. We don't have ones we can angle or change the direction of, and again, the curtains on the outside more or less match the curtains on the inside. I think that's quite a good effect. The furnishings inside this sprite are quite dark. Again, I think that's a thing of personal taste, but I do think if you've got children, um, that darkness will hide some of the grubby marks that children obviously make from time to time. 
The cupboards obviously being white might show a few of those marks up over time because children, but my children have grubby hands and they go in and out of the cupboard. So I'll show you on the front of the caravan first. So the front of the caravan, like I said before sitting down, we've got the three front windows, we've got the skylight and then a kind of large size hiking hiking that's all in built over here. Again, quite a bit of natural light coming in the front. You've got the occasional table, a couple of drawers and a drop down flap and then a couple of two room heaters. What I do quite like on this van is that it actually has drop down flaps on the front. I think it's a really useful feature rather than to kind of keep pulling up and down the uh, bed and again on the same other side. Exactly the same there. I think that's a good feature on a caravan. We've got, like I said, the three overhead lockers. So they're a good depth. There's no shelf in them, but they're a good size depth. And you can put plenty of stuff in there. The other one's pretty much the same. And then at the front here, we've got like a sort of covered uh, kind of cubby hole going on there. And it's pretty much the same on the other side. So cubby hole. Um, with a kind of locker, couple of locker covers there. It's good that it's got a positive catch on as well. So we've got quite a large wardrobe in here. Again, nice with a nice white and it makes it nice and bright in here. So it's open that for a second, both sides. Again, the camera takes a couple of, times, a couple of seconds to catch up. This is where obviously the aerial is. There is a hanger. Uh, obviously, the kind of the the back can become bunk beds. We'll that in a second. Bit of space, quite a large space there to put, uh, maybe close, maybe you could even buy one of them little drawer sections and there's a couple of shelves in there. So now we're going to move on to looking around the kitchen. So here we have the kitchen in the Sprite DD. We have a very long surface space there. So that I quite like here is we've got this little sort of shelf section to put things that you might need access to, maybe phones and things while they're charging. Um, and I think that's a really good idea that other caravan companies could learn from. We've got a couple of spaces for sockets there. Above the top there, we've got an integrated microwave and we've got two spaces. So on the right hand side, we've got the rack and plate section. And on the left hand side, that's a large cupboard with a little bit of a radio system in there as well. Panning back, we've got the window there. Down the bottom here, which I think is another good feature, we've got another cubby hole there. And we've got a reasonable size cupboard. Again, shelf in there. A Dometic under the counter fridge, which I'll have at the second. And it still has their cupboard, which has a pull out space to put your cutter in. And there is some space below as well. Or there is some intrusion from the wheel arch, but that's often to be expected. And then panning back out again, we've got the uh, the oven by Fetford, which is a separate grill and oven. And again, the space to put your pots and pans at the bottom. And on this model here, we have a three gas burner, so it's not dual fuel. I think most people can get away with that. And I do quite like the fact, again, the family caravan, that if you've got the pans on here, they're not necessarily going to protrude out and also the children might not accidentally come in and knock them from time to time. And I said there's one last cupboard here, which is like a large space. And I talked about that before. So moving on from the kitchen, I've got the control panels above here. So we've got the Truma Heaton, the smart control from Swift, which can be accessed to your mobile phone. One piece door, which you look at them outside. And then on the back here, we have a screen and we also have a second dinette. Now, the second dinette has kind of more or less disappeared a bit more from manufacturing. However, old family caravans or older family caravans, such as say, did used to use the slip quite well. And it is really um, versatile and there's a lot of things you can do. So again, come on the top here, got covered space all on the top. Some shelving in there, cubby holes opposed to it, hasn't got a cupboard front on. Again, put kids' games and other bits and pieces in there. Couple more um, access lockers, another cubby hole on the other side, and then another access locker here. We have now because it's the back, there's a multitude of things that you can do with this. You can obviously have the bed, so you could pull the bed out from that cabinet and you could pull it out along here. And you could do that. The other thing you could do 
is you could use it as two separate singles. So there's two different options. If you've got two people that want separate beds, two singles, not the longest, but great for children. The other option you've got is you actually have, and you can see the metal bits here, bunks. So you have another bunk, um, which can go above there. And then you can also have a bunk, which goes on the other side as well. So that gives you a six berth. So bottom one, two, three, and then four, then two at the front. And I think this is a layout that a lot of people probably should consider, because I think it gives you space. We've considered if we did buy a double um, a double dinette, that what we would probably do is we would probably leave one side set up, and then we'd use the other side. Um, and I think, you know, if you've got a little one, they can still fit under the bunk. As they get a bit bigger, that becomes a bit more uh, tricky. And we've also got a roof light over there. So last thing we need to do is just to pan back and look inside the bathroom, which again is a great size. So we're out here, we've got some little shelves now, which so you still put on toilet walls or other toilet use on um, that you need access to. Good size mirror. It does have a smaller little light as opposed to some other gabans have in, but I think it does let enough light in. We have a Fetford electric flush toilet. Um, we also have a cupboard to put stuff in. This isn't. Well, you know, catch is too much magnetic catch as opposed to kind of a, a, a positive catch there. Some space in there. But what I really like is the absolute enormity, or I think for a lot of caravans, a very large shower. Now, the other thing you can think about with this caravan, if you look down here, is it is quite deep. And there is a lip. I don't know if you can see the lip on the front there. You could actually put a plug in there. And if you've got a small baby, you could use it as a little mini bath until they get a little bit bigger. So the Sprite Quattro DD with a dime pack down here at United British Caravan Newcastle. We build at 21,475 and give some bits of spec on the front there. So hopefully that's been useful for you and it does give you a different layout. And I think this layout isn't dead like some people think and it's not all about fixed bunks. And it gives you a lot of versatility if the van needs to be versatile and sometimes use parts and sometimes don't use parts.